McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Join us now as we mix it up with serious car enthusiasts from all walks of life, across America and around the world, and discover why so many of us have become car crazy. Hey, it's about the hood. However you describe your passion for cars, it transcends all geographic, economic, ethnic, age, and gender barriers. Car Crazy is your emotional connection with car lovers all over the world who you have nothing in common with except for this unexplainable passion for cars that every car enthusiast understands and feels to their very core. It's been called a contagious disease, and we want you to catch the bugs, <laughs> if you haven't already. If I sell this car, I will sell half of my body, you know, so yeah. I just have it's, to keep this car. The Pebble Beach for 2004 is going to be spectacular. <laughs> Spending 50000 on a Civic, that's called crazy. <laughs> and now your host, Barry McGuire. Every February, the major collector car hobbyists from around the world converge on Paris, France. The reason behind this annual pilgrimage is a Retromobile, the ultimate trade show for car collectors looking to stay up with the latest trends, equipment, and technology, and find those rare, very special parts that you just can't find anywhere else. Best of all, Retromobile is the place to visit with your friends from around the world or meet some new ones that share this amazing passion for cars. Walk in the aisles of this world-class show provides you with a non-stop flow of the who's who of the car hobby. Why? Because they're a car crazy. Hi everybody, this is a special edition of Car Crazy Television. Coming to you today from Paris, France. Uh, Retromobile, the famous trade show for car guys that draws the car hobby from all over the world. Here today with Francois uh, Melcion, the director of nice this to meet show you. for uh, 29 years you've been doing this, Francois. Yes, it's, I think, uh, a bit crazy to, to do that for 29 years. But, you know, it's not boring to do that because each year it's a special fetcher and each year it's very different. And, you know, the, the show has been growing from years and years. And we start with about 5,000 square meters and now we are 20,000 square meters. It's a place where you can meet all the people you wish, you know, all the people you have met along the, whole the year. The hobby is here, friends from all over the world. They're all here everywhere, everywhere you look, you're seeing yes. people you know. <laughs> yes, the first time I met you was in US and you, you, you are coming here with right. a lot of American people and I hope right. many of them will come right. after they have seen what we can show here. And there is another incredible story here is the man who crossed the Atlantic with an amphibian jeep. You will see that car. So I, I know you're car crazy. Do you have a you have a favorite story to talk about? Help, help our viewers understand how car crazy you are. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, well, what I told you, because I, I, the first car I bought was when I was 15. And I think I'm a bit crazy because I still got the car and I'm not 16, <laughs> you know. If I sell this car, I will sell half of my body, you know, so yeah, I just have it's, to keep this it's car. part of the family. Yes, it's, it's not a very family. valuable car, but uh, it's my heart. <laughs> yeah, and, and the car is? Uh, the car is a Citroen, a 1930 Citroen, and I bought it for about $50. My gracious. Francois Melcy on the uh, director of this fabulous show, and, and I know you're so busy today. Thanks for sharing yeah. some time with us, and good Thank luck you. today. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. When we come back, we'll find out how the French were ingenious in protecting their precious cars during World War II. You won't want to miss this. And later, we'll go car hopping across America and around the world. And we'll visit with the next generation of car guys. So stay tuned, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy! Car Crazy! Welcome back to Car Crazy at Retromobile 2004. We caught up with our buddy Murray Smith to introduce a very, well, not that you're not special, but introduce a, a, one of the most special guests in the whole place tonight. This is the man. How very kind of you. No, there is nobody more important at this show, Barry, than Mark Nicolosi. I met Mark in 1973, of all things, at Le Mans, when he was driving his old, uh, what were you driving there, a Maserati or something? Oh, Ferrari. Uh, well, same, same thing now. Um, and he started this show over 30 years ago now, and he has been the soul of this show. It is undoubtedly... The, I think it's the car show with the most heart in the world. What was your original inspiration for this show? What, what, why did you, you know, start to begin with at the beginning? You know, I was always in, a, in old cars, you know. When I was very young, you know, I buy an old cars. And uh, always, uh, uh, 
I use all cars in the road and uh, once somebody asked to me to organize a, a little show for uh, the promotion of a book, you know, Alpha Encyclopedia. And I do that and after that I think, oh, if the business is in the show, you know, the, biz the, the show can grow up, you know. So it begins like that, you know. What was your original inspiration to be tied to the car? When did you just first know that you were a, a car guy? Five, six years old, you know. And always I, I play with the cars and after that I buy cars <laughs> before I have the, the license, you know. <laughs> I buy cars and, and the other man, Francois Melchion, who works with me since 25 years, was exactly the same uh, profile. Mm -hmm. uh, I met him, he was 16 years old, and uh, in France, you know, you cannot have your license at this time before 20, uh, 21 years and uh, old. Uh, he have a car, you know, no license, but he have the car. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite car show event in the United States? Oh, Pebble Beach, sure. Sure, it's Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach is the best uh, in the world, I think, for the show, you know. We need to and get this guy back uh, doing the Rockefeller Center show. Right? I will, I shall, I'm going to, that have was no such, fear. That was such a great... In New York, you have a face, it is superb. Yeah, what he said, I'm glad to translate that. He said, what you did in New York was superb. And of course, I totally agree with you. No, we're going to do it again. Yeah. On, on New York, you yeah. have a fear. Mm -hmm. But t tell me what your plans are there, because our viewers would like to know if there's some hope that uh, the Rockefeller Center Concourse comes Well, come there, back. there is definitely hope for the Rockefeller Center Concourse to come back. Christie's, you know, is a big tenant at Rockefeller Center, so they are going to have a, they had an auction there for a couple of years and I think what we will do in the future is uh, perhaps have a combination of the auction and and uh, the concours again uh, I had a meeting just the other day with the guys from Rockefeller Center and it looks like we're going to do that again Outstanding. so, so now we're just praying that the uh, rock Center will come back again well I sincerely hope it will you're a great yeah. showman and a great collector well, a great no. friend of the hobby and thank you very whether much whether it be Monaco or uh, Paris or New York or wherever okay. nice we see. thank you back, thank you back. Great. Car crazy when I was two years old, my mother, who is an artist, designed a little barquetta, a little red race car out of a cardboard box, and she put a little seat in it, and I sat in it and made all the noises, vroom, 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 <laughs> for an hour, and she thought, this is a solution to a hyperactive child. <laughs> so she uh, continued and bought me a go-kart when I was old enough to race a go-kart, and from a go-kart, I uh, expanded uh, later in life to other cars, real cars. And then I was bit by the history of the Millimilia. But I finally figured out a way to buy a 1951 Seata. And I began in the Millimilia solo and was the first woman to ever complete the Millimilia in 1992. I have a special uh, guardian angel, as they say, a gift that was given to me, and then we've recreated it, and he's Angelino, <laughs> and he is the guardian angel on the road of life, and so he's like him, a, a like one, has always been in the car, and so he's given to the children in hospital when we go to hospitals. Well, I think driving in the Millimilia not being able to speak Italian, never having shipped a car, and buying a car with a credit card, <laughs> first and foremost, and uh, learning from scratch how to do this, how to really participate in a world event race uh, without knowing a soul is quite crazy. Car crazy! Well, this car is a 1946 uh, Delage six-cylinder race car. Uh, one of the five factory cars that uh, raced in the Grand Prix races in Le Mans starting in 47 up through 1950. Historic racing is one of the great experiences that uh, I'm proud enough to be able to enjoy. I raced mostly pre-war French cars, Bugattis, Delahays, Delages, Tabalagos, and this one I hope to have ready to race at Le Mans this year at the uh, historic Le Mans races in July. I have a garage uh, kind of fitted in the French uh, early 30s style uh, where I keep the cars. It's underground uh, with a herb garden and fountains on top of it because I didn't really want to look out the back door of my house and see a big block garage. So I decided that 
since you own down as well as owing up, I should dig down and put the cars there. Well, I own one Type 165. There were two made, one for the Paris Exhibition in uh, 1939 and one for the World's Fair in 1939. So I'm lucky enough to have the World's Fair car. They only made two. They were the special V12 Delahays that uh, the French uh, fabricated to show the world kind of the best of French styling, French design, French performance. And uh, so it was in the pavilion of the New York World's Fair for the rest of the world to see. Right after that, uh, the Germans invaded France and of course one of the objectives was to make sure that the cars that beat the Germans were not found because there was concern that the German army would want to destroy them since it kind of embarrassed the Germans. So the car I have was hidden in northern France in a hillside uh, and throughout the war and found after that period of time and then brought back to restoration. So it's one of the four, I actually have two of the four of the V12 racing uh, Delahays. I would definitely say I'm car crazy. As you know, uh, car lovers become interested in the hobby and then they become focused on it. Then they get a little bit consumed by it. Uh, and then it becomes uh, an illness, I think, and that's what makes your car crazy. When we come back, we'll see some of the detail and workmanship that went into these magnificent cars and explore what one car crazy man did out of love for his wife. So stay tuned. We'll be right back, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. Car Crazy! The people you are about to meet represent the heart and soul of the car hobby. In the truest sense, this is Reality TV for Car Guys. We're here at the world-famous Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida for the 13th annual Cavalino Classic, which features a field of some of the most rare and beautiful Ferraris in the world. Let's go talk to some of their car crazy owners. Well, here's Bill Emerson, the president of the Austin Healy Club. Bill, what are you doing at a Ferrari event? Uh, I'm enjoying looking at the cars and hopefully I'll even hear some of them. I was out at the races yesterday where I could hear the sound of these absolutely fantastic Ferrari engines. And then here, there's just this beautiful body lines. It doesn't make a difference if it's a Healy or if it's a Ferrari or what it is. <laughs> if you love cars, you love cars. You look at what a car is. For instance, there is a Ferrari over there. It is as it was when it was new, and it is beautiful, and it's magnificent. And that's why you come to things like this. I'm so car crazy, it doesn't make any difference what the car is. If it's beautiful and if it sounds good, I'm happy. The best thing is I get to drive some of these cars, and that I really like. Here's the chief judge for the event, Ed Gilbertson. Ed, how are we doing today? Hello, Barry. I, well, so far so good. It's a wonderful show. We're mushing along. You are a glutton for punishment to be able to be chief judge at Pebble Beach as well. Yes. I mean, I, the, the pressure and all these, may I say, egos, everybody wanting to have their car win. It's, there's a lot of pressure. Well, it's a lot of time and a lot of work, but I tell you, it's wonderful cars and I, I enjoy doing it. I've done it for a long time and we kind of move from one major show to another. Well, of all the March Ferrari, I mean, you really know Ferraris. Well, I've been with Ferraris for a long time. It's really where I started judging uh, back in the 70s, and uh, and I'm still with Ferrari. And of course, at Pebble Beach, I handle not just Ferrari, yeah. but all of the marks, yeah. so that's a real challenge. Yeah. Pebble Beach for 2004 is going to be spectacular. Our co-feature marks are Ferrari and the 100th anniversary of Rolls-Royce, so we're going to have yeah. lots of Ferraris and lots of Rolls right. there. How can you describe this event? I mean, it's so so magnificent. Well, you know, Barry, I've been with this event since the beginning. This is the uh, 13th annual uh, Palm Beach Cavalino Classic, and uh, it started off small, like most things do, and over the years, uh, it's grown to a major world-class event. I think we've got a wonderful venue here at the Breakers, and uh, always enjoy being back here with my judges. But there are some really great cars here. We're just delighted with the turnout this year. Yeah. My name is Alan Morris, and I am certified car crazy. Now, let's find out how car crazy you are. What do the initials AC stand for in AC spark plugs? Is it alternating current, Albert Champion, Advanced Chamber, 
or Andrew Carnegie? Think you know the answer? We'll find out a little later in the show. When we return, we'll visit with more of the car crazy people at Retromobile. So stay tuned, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. I'm Bucky Lassick, professional skateboarder, and you are watching Car Crazy on Speed. Woo! Car Crazy! Car Crazy! Welcome back to Car Crazy from Retromobile 2004 in Paris, France. We're here with Charles Howard from Gloucestershire, England, and uh, Charles, a magnificent car you have here. Oh, well, right. thank you very much. Well, well, this, I think uh, it's pretty magnificent too. Out of too. your collection, I know you have many cars, but this car is really, well, really this special. Well, this is the car I've been in love with since 1972, uh, when I first saw it. Um, well, this is not your father's uh, Rolls Royce. This no, is, this, this is, is not. Tell us about the story about this car. It's well, a, this it's car, so this, particularly this, for Americans. So well, this car was ordered by a man called C.W. Gask, who was the director secretary of the London Woolworth Company, the English branch of the Woolworth Company. He was married to a young lady who was a Woolworth heiress. Uh, and Mr. Gask, some of his fellow directors, had bought cars from a, quite a small coach builder, Mr. Barnett. Mr. Gask went to see Mr. Barnett in 1926 and he told Mr. Barnett that he wanted to give his wife a surprise present. He wanted a Rolls Royce with a French interior. So he gave Mr. Barnett carte blanche. He said to Mr. Barnett, I don't care what you spend or what oh you do, God. I've got complete faith in you that you'll make something beautiful for me and for my wife and you just have to deliver it within a year when it's her birthday. <laughs> In April 1927, they got the car. It took nearly a year to build. The whole theme of the interior of the car is love and romance. There are cherubs and the, the scenes on the tapestry by Aubusson are romantic scenes uh, after Boucher, a famous uh, French artist. And this tapestry, by the way, was ordered especially for this car. It took six months to make. It cost 500 pounds, not a lot of money today, but 500 pounds in 1926 would buy you a new six-roomed house in a very nice leafy suburb. So that gives you an idea of, um, of values. And the ceiling on this car is superbly painted. He found a French artist who was working in London to paint the ceiling of the car, to paint the uh, satinwood furniture in the car. Well, beautiful car. Thanks for bringing it here to Retro Via this year. That no, was a pleasure. And it's a pleasure to keep it. It's a pleasure that your guys are keeping <laughs> it so beautifully clean. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Thank you, Charles. When we come back, we'll find out what the initials AC stand for in AC Spark Plug. So stay tuned. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Car Crazy. So what do the initials AC stand for in the name AC Spark Plugs? In 1908, after the breakup of his original company, Champion Spark Plugs, Albert Champion began a new company bearing his initials called the AC Spark Plug Company. And uh, frankly, if you knew this obscure bit of car trivia, <laughs> you must be car crazy. Just when we thought the car hobby might lose the next generation to computers and video games, an entirely new genre of car guys has exploded onto the scene. Their cars are a lot different from the old days, along with the words they use to describe them. But their passion is exactly the same as it has been for car guys since the beginning of our hobby. This new breed of enthusiast is rocking the car hobby to a whole new level, and they brought their computers and video games with them. Listen to what next generation car guys have to say. Me and my brother, after work, work in our father's garage, and then we started getting really busy. And we put a car together, went out, did some publicity. You know, people liked our work, and it was pretty neat. Doing other people's cars, custom, you know, fabricated stuff. If it doesn't fit, make it fit. Well, uh, my father's always started making a, you know, helping us out, showing us how to build motors and stuff like that. My earliest memory with my father was to do an engine swap, putting a 16 valve Volkswagen engine into an 82 Rabbit. He teaches how to do it. We took that into an import scene. My father had 100% to do with everything we do now. So, my father, he does. he's more known like in Europe, you know, known here like in Portugal, where we're from. Yeah, my father used to build more like Nissan's dads from back into the rallying era, like the, you know, 1950s, yeah, 60s. Like, pretty much back in the 50s and 60s with Nissan's and uh, Mitsubishi and stuff yeah. like that. Honda CRX, it took us about six, seven times to put the motor back out, back in, until we got it to run the way it's supposed to run. We moved from Europe, so we never, in Europe, we never had like, you know, the big V8 muscle thing. 
we're always into the imports. These cars, like fully built motors like this, we've built about like about 30 of them so far for the past five years. Well, this is a 2000 Civic Si. This is a 99 Lexus GS300, the 2002 WRX. <laughs> Spending 50,000 on a Civic, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> crazy. It's just the rush, I mean, it's my hobby. I love the crowd, the people when they come and see, you know. It makes you feel makes real good. happy, you know, see what we can be able to build and hopefully, you know, we get them to go for a drive. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. One of the things I like most about the car hobby is the effect it has on our values, our priorities, our lifestyles, and even bringing families closer together. Uh, Bruce from Hilliard, Ohio, writes a very poignant letter that I'd like to share with you. He says, uh, Mr. McGuire, I love your show. I, too, am car crazy, but I'm not a famous collector or an industry legend. I'm a 40-year-old father of three who five years ago was diagnosed with terminal blood cancer. My prognosis was three to five years with no treatment and no cure. Five years later, I am the happiest and healthiest terminally ill person you have ever met. I owe a lot of my health to the love of our hobby and my family. I wanted to do something with my three children that we could enjoy working on and then enjoy the fruit of our labors together. So we decided to build a Shelby Cobra. The project really brought us closer as a family. When the car was finished, it took first place at the first show we took it to. Not resting on our past work, we decided to build our dream car, 34 Ford Woody Street Ride. We've had so much fun over the past five years that I never wanted it to end. So the kids and I decided to start a car crazy based business. You see, you don't have to be famous or one of the founding fathers of the car hobby to have an impact. All you have to be is a dad who loves his kids and hopes that he can pass that love along, surrounded by family and great friends. Thank you for your show, and I know I'll never stop being car crazy. It's a wonderful thing how the car hobby has such an amazing effect on bringing families together. Folks, that's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and come back and join us again on our next edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. Car Crazy has been brought to you by McGuire's. Serious car care for car crazy people. If you're car crazy or know someone who is, send your car crazy comments or confessions to carcrazycentral.com. <laughs>